another lesson of stats with your host, Mr. Nady, a.k.a. Prof. Nady. So today we are going over lesson 9.1, which we're starting to go into. Um, all right, instead of having one like data, right? When we have just one sets of data, what happens when we have two when we have difference? So in this case, we're going to describe a difference between the two proportions. All right, so before I start, what does that mean? Describing, what does it mean to have a difference between two proportions? Because we're also going to look at difference between two means, but let's just focus right now on the difference between two proportions. So let me go over here. Let me just give you this example of the type of data that we're going to be working with, and then I continue and go on our lesson. So it says right here, to express the distribution of p hat 1 minus p hat 2, let's start with two populations having a known proportion of success. Suppose that there are two large high schools in a certain town. At school 1, 70% of students did their homework last night, which is p1 is going to be 0.7. Only 50% of the students at school 2 did their homework last night, which is P2 equals 0.50. The counselor at school 1 takes a simple random sample of 100 students and records the proportion. So P hats 1 who did their homework, right? School 2's counselor takes also a SRS sample of 200 students and records the proportion P2 who did their homework. What can we say about the difference? of P1 hat and P2 hat. Remember, we're still, we're dealing with sampling distribution still in the sample proportions. And it says, let's do a simulation to find out. We use software to randomly select 100 students from school one and 200 students from school two. Our first set of sample gave P1 equals 0.72 and P2 equals 0.47, resulting in a difference of P1 minus P2, which is, it's just, doing the subtraction right, which is 0.25. A red dot for this value appears in figure 9.1. So right here is the 0.25 that they found out. The dot plot shows the result of repeating this process a thousand times. So remember, so what they did in this case is that they generated 100 students for one school, 200 students for another school. They found what we have p hat right, which is the proportion sample. They subtract the proportion sample and they plotted that point. Now to get the other points, because they did a thousand times, they did the same thing. They selected another 100 SRA samples of students and then 200 SRA samples of the other school. They found the proportion and they subtract them to each other and they always did school one minus school two's proportion of students who did homework. So this is the type of data that be working with. One of the things that I really want to point out is the fact that in one of the schools we had 100 simple random samples and the other one we had 200 simple random samples. And from these right here is where we found P hat and P, P1 hat and P2 hat. So this is what we're going to do. Today all we got to do is describe this right here. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to describe the shape center and variability of the sampling distributions of difference between two sample proportions. So we're going to be using this data where we have two proportions uh, and then we're going to subtract them and then we're going to see what happens. All right, let's move on. So describing the shape of p hat 1 minus p hat 2. Whenever I say p hat 1 minus p uh, hat 2, what I mean is that we subtracted the proportions and we put the point there. So we're working with this type of data. All right, so the shape. So remember in statistics, there are different shapes. We have only seen four, skewed to the right, skewed to the left, normal and uniform. So we're still gonna be working with normal. So to describe the shape, of a sampling distribution to check that it's approximately normal, there's going to be actually four things. And you can already guess what those four things are. We've been using them over and over, right? So just be careful with the notation. It says N1 times P1 has to be bigger or equal to 10. Then you got to check the other one. N1 times 1 minus P1 has to be greater or equal to 10. But now, remember, we already ch ch uh, checked that the sample. Um, data from P1 is normal. 
Now we got to do for the second one. So the next one is N2 P times P2 has to be greater or equal to 10. And of course, N2 um, times 1 minus P2 has to be greater or equal to 10. So this four things, if we check them, we check that this data for my proportion 1 is normal. And we check that these other data for proportion 2 is normal. Then by definition, right, basically we have that when we subtract these two data, we still going to have approximately a normal distribution. All right. Now let's look at an example. So I have an example right here. Let me see. Zoom in a little bit. So we have here um, Angelica and Kyle both work for the Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV, but they live in a different states. And Angelica states 84% of registered cars are made by U.S. manufacturers. In Kyle state, only 63% of registered cars are made by U.S. manufacturers. Angelica selects a random sample of 100 cars in her state. And Kyle selects a random sample of 70 cars in his state. Let P uh, hat 1 minus P hat 2 be the difference between Angelica's state minus Kyle states in the sample proportion of cars made by American manufacturers. All right, so the first question here is what is the sample, what is the shape of the sampling distribution of my data of p hat 1 minus p hat 2 and y? Well, the solution here says that it's approximately normal because, well, p1 is angelic state, and in angelic state, we have that 84 percent of registered cars are made by U.S. manufacturers. So there's a 0.84. And then she selected a random sample of 100 cars. So it's going to be 100. Be careful with this. Um, whenever you're doing P hat 1, make sure that you have the proportion of the 1 with the random samples of the 1. So in this case, Angelica's is P hat 1. So it's Angelica's uh, proportion of uh, cars and Angelica's random samples. And we get that that's 84. And then we plug it in in my other equation, and we get that that's 16. So that means that Angelica's sample distribution for proportions of U.S. manufacturers is approximately normal. Now let's check Kyle's. Well, Kyle's has a 63% of registered cars, but Kyle's random sample is 70. So we got 0.63 times 70, 44.1. That's good. And then we have 70 times 0.37. Remember, this 0.37, how we got it is just we did 1 minus 0.63, and we get that it's 25.9. And all these numbers, as you notice, 84, 16, 44.1, and 25.9, they are bigger than 10. So we can say that the distribution of the sample difference proportion is approximately normal. And when it says why, well, why is because we check the conditions, our four conditions. All right. So if you want to right now take a moment and try number one on your homework slash um, practice, go ahead and do so. All right, welcome back. Let's go on to the next thing. So now we're going to describe the center of this difference of proportions. Well, remember that the center could be two things, the median or the mean, but in this case, my sample, uh, my sample distribution of the difference is going to be described. The center is going to be described by the mean. Why? Because remember, the mean we use when we have a uniform distribution, and if it's approximately normal, we have a uniform distribution. So to find the mean, all you got to do is do p hat one minus p hat two. And that's it. So in our example, it says find the mean of the sampling distribution for B. So for B, this is the word for B. So uh, the mean for P hat 1 minus P hat 2 is just P1 minus P2. So P1, again, be careful with the notation. That's the only thing that you got to be careful. P1 was um, angelic state, right? It says it right here, which is 0.84. And P2 is Kyle state, so it's 0.63. So we're going to have 0.84 minus 0.63, and we get that the mean, the center of the sample distribution of 
uh, proportion differences is 0.21 or 21%. This is very nice because it's kind of straightforward. You just got to be careful with those um, assigning the correct value to P1 and P2. All right. All right, so if you want to take a couple of seconds and try number two on your homework, it's asking you to find the mean of that sample distribution of my differences of proportion. Go ahead. All right, so let's move on. Next thing, it says calculating the standard deviation. We are calculating the standard deviation because we are describing the variability of our distribution. So we already described the center. We already described the shape in my first two questions. Now we're going to describe the variability. Remember, the variability is how does my data, how's my data spread out? And we calculate the standard deviation so we could see how the data spreads out from the distance from the center to its ends, correct? All right. Well, there's actually just a formula to calculate the standard deviation. And this right here is the formula. I know it looks a little bit scary, but I just want to remind you, just plus, we have all these numbers, P1, P1, N1, P2, P2, N2. They're going to be given in your problem. You just got to plug them in. Be careful with your calculations, though. Whenever you plug everything in, the last... Uh, uh, this whole thing, notice that it's underneath a square root. So you got to do P1, 1 minus P2 over N1, and whatever that number you get, you're going to add it to this number, and then that number, you're going to do the square root. All right? How does that look in our example? So last one, of course, we got we to calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And here it is. P1 is 0.84 because that is... Um, Angelica state proportion of U.S. cars that were manufactured here in the U.S. And then we have, you know, 0.16, because that's 1 minus 16. Then N, N1, remember, N1 is just my sample size. And um, Angelica did 100 random samples. And then we go to Kyle's. Kyle's is 63% of U.S. cars were manufactured here. Um, and then we got 1 minus 0.63, which is 0.37, all over 70 now, I know that I, I didn't put all the steps, but what they did here is that they found this number, then they added it to this number, and at the end, they square rooted it. So after square rooting that final number, they get 0 0.0684. And whenever you give me the answer for this one, also round to the fourth decimal place as well. So there it is. So my, from the center of 0.21, one standard deviation away from the center is about 0 0.0684. And you can see it's two and three standard deviations. It's going to basically show us that nice distribution curve for this sample. All right. Well, that is it for this lesson. It's just um, very, I find it to be kind of just like a review lesson. It's uh, we're still doing a mean. We're still finding center, variability, describing all those things that we have been describing before. But in this case, we're using different types of data because we're doing the difference. That's it. And um, <clears throat> that'll be it for today's lesson.